Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to talk about congenital adrenal hyperplasia and how uh, it causes a systemic effect in the entire body. In the last few videos, we talked about very specific components of congenital adrenal hyperplasia because this is just a categorical term referring to the enzyme deficiencies in the adrenal gland, such as 21 hydroxylase deficiency, 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency, and 17 alpha hydroxylase deficiency. And uh, all of these collectively cause something called congenital adrenal hyperplasia. And so we're gonna talk about what exactly this means. And so hyperplasia is just a fancy term, uh, meaning an increase in cell number. And so when you have, uh, for example, a 21 hydroxylase deficiency, you get a decrease in aldosterone and a decrease in cortisol. And it's going to cause some feedback mechanisms in the body to then cause an increase in cell number. So the adrenal gland itself is going to grow and we're gonna see exactly how that happens. But hyperplasia is not an increase in cell size, just an increase in cell number. The cell size is going to be the same as it already was. Um, this is opposed to something called hypertrophy, which if you've heard about hypertrophy with muscles, uh, muscles do not increase in number, they only increase in size. And so today we are not talking about hypertrophy. There's no size change, only a change in the number of cells. So we have a hyperplasia. And so we're just going to look at this and we're gonna bring back uh, some very familiar drawings to all of you, and namely the adrenal gland and our kidney. And if you remember from our videos on um, the adrenal cortex, we produce aldosterone, cortisol, and androgens in the adrenal cortex. And when we have decreased amounts of aldosterone or cortisol, we get an increased androgens. Uh, and you can go back and watch that video specifically on how all of that happens. But today we're gonna look at the feedback mechanisms. And so this also kind of goes back to feedback mechanisms that we talked about in my puberty blocker video, because we are going to interact with another part of the body uh, called the hypothalamus. And this looks like a lot, uh, but it's very similar to the puberty blocker pathway. We just have different hormones involved now. So let's say we're in a time of stress and we need a lot more cortisol to be able to raise our blood sugar levels. So we have stress and uh, there's pathways in the brain about how you respond to stress, but basically stress is going to cause the hypothalamus to produce a hormone called CRH, which is corticotropin releasing hormone, which will then float down to the anterior pituitary, stimulate release of another hormone called ACTH or adrenocorticotropic hormone. And it's called adrenocorticotropic hormone because it stimulates the adrenal gland to make cortico tropic hormones, so, uh, such as cortisol. And it also is going to stimulate aldosterone a little bit, but not very much because aldosterone is mainly stimulated by a different pathway. So mostly for this one, focus on cortisol, but we're gonna have a huge increase in cortisol once we have a release from uh, ACTH. But then uh, we're gonna get an increase in cortisol, which is then going to go back via negative feedback and tell the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary that we don't need any more cortisol, we can stop making cortisol. So that is our negative feedback pathway. But let's say we have a 21 hydroxylase deficiency. So if you remember, we can't make aldosterone and we can't make cortisol. So those are no longer in question. So if we look at this pathway then, we have stress that uh, stimulates the hypothalamus to produce CRH. CRH is going to cause release of ACTH. And then ACTH is going to act on the adrenal cortex, but you can't produce aldosterone or cortisol. So it's going to not cause any negative feedback to go back to the hypothalamus. You can't inhibit any of this pathway because you have no way to produce aldosterone or cortisol. So the brain is going to think that we have no aldosterone and no cortisol and that we need to make more. So then the brain is going to tell the anterior pituitary that we need to release more ACTH. And so you're gonna get a really high amount of ACTH. 
And then that is going to then stimulate the adrenal cortex to grow. So we're going to get hyperplasia because we're going to get cells now that are going to grow because we need to now keep up with this demand of aldosterone and cortisol um, in the adrenal gland. And so this is where we get the congenital adrenal hyperplasia. But I do also want to focus a little bit on aldosterone and what happens with this because ACTH doesn't really stimulate aldosterone. Aldosterone um, responds via a different pathway. So let's say that uh, we have an increase in blood pressure or we have a decrease in blood pressure because uh, if we have low aldosterone, we're going to have low blood pressure. And so this low blood pressure is going to tell the kidney that we need to raise our blood pressure. And so the kidney is going to release something called renin. And renin uh, is responsible for converting a molecule called angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. And then angiotensin 1 is going to be converted by ACE to angiotensin 2, which is going to uh, cause release of aldosterone. But once again, we can't produce aldosterone. So now the kidney is going to think that we don't have enough fluid in our body to increase our blood pressure. So this is just going to keep becoming this vicious cycle. And we're just going to like keep increasing renin. We're going to keep increasing everything down here. And we're going to keep growing this adrenal gland. So this is where it kind of becomes a problem. And this is the one case, uh, one one of very few cases that we would need to medically intervene um, in someone who has a difference in sexual development. And I know this was a lot to cover in one video. I hope all of it made sense. Please uh, leave any questions down below. I can even break this up into a more simplified video if that would help. Uh, but please like this video and subscribe to my channel and I will see you all in the next one.